name's Tim Mills. I'm the Referee Development Officer for Metropolitan. I'm here today also with Bill Mildenhall, the Technical Official Manager here at Bass Victoria. He also holds a seat on the FIBA Technical Commission and we're here today to talk about the FIBA 2017 rules. In particular today, we're going to talk about the travel rule. In Victoria, we'll start to see these new rules being implemented from late 2017 into 2018. So I guess, Bill, I'd like to kick things off by asking why there's been such a significant change with the travel rule. I guess, Tim, it all came about, I think, uh, part of the endeavours of the FIBA Technical Commission is to try to unify the rules around the world. And one of the most influential areas is obviously the NBA. So they looked very closely at the NBA travel rule and uh, as a consequence decided to sort of adopt pretty much the same sort of rules that they have in place now. And then secondly, one of the areas that was of a concern to the Commission was the fact that the reverse spin move was becoming a more and more popular move and an accepted move by players around the world. And technically, if you were to uh, break it down, a lot of the times when they were making that move, they were in fact um, re-establishing a pivot foot, which then meant that they were uh, travelling. So the Commission decided that they wanted to maintain that sort of move in the game and as a consequence decided to try to make some changes to allow that to be acceptable. I think it's really important to note that these changes really only involve players who are receiving the ball or gathering the ball on the move. So previous travel rules still exist when a player is stationary. However, the changes occur. So if a player is gathering or taking control of the ball off the dribble or taking a control of the ball from a pass while on the run, that's when the, the rule changes apply. Thanks, Bill. Uh, obviously, now it's a good time to start having a look at some clips, but one of the ones we want to start talking about first is uh, where there's been no change, which is the start of the dribble. Yeah, so the principles still apply, Tim, that uh, a player must be putting the ball towards the floor before they lift their pivot foot um, to be able to, to take off. So um, that, this rule hasn't changed in any way, shape or form. Thanks for that, Bill. Obviously now, a good opportunity to start looking at what's new. Some of the interesting things, we've got some examples here of some layups, some left and right hand layups, just from different angles, but uh, perhaps talk us through it, Bill. Yeah, Tim, as you notice here, we've referred to the first step when they take control of the ball as being zero. And then the, uh, the next movement is the next step, which is step one and step two. So in principle, um, the rule is pretty much the same in terms of you're allowed um, two steps. However, the difference is when you take control of the ball, when one foot is on the ground, that foot is regarded as being zero. The next movement would be the first step and the second step is the, the following step from there. So Bill, if we just look at the next example here, and we'll watch it uh, in normal motion first, but perhaps just take us through frame by frame of how that works. Okay, so the first step, our right foot is zero, second step is the left foot is one, and the right foot again is the second step. As we look at the next example, Bill, and we'll obviously replay this twice, but uh, it's really important for the referees to identify when the ball comes to rest. And this is where the contentious issue will be. Here we would say that she gave control of the ball with her left foot on the floor. She then steps with her right, which is one. She then steps with her left, which is two. And she steps with her right again, which makes it three. And that would make it illegal. If we move on to the next example, we're now looking at starting the dribble from the stationary position to a layup belt. Okay, we've got it. She's received the ball while stationary. So once she starts her dribble, she must release the ball before she lifts her pivot foot, which is her right foot. The ball is on the way down. She now gathers the ball with her left foot on the floor. Zero, one, two, and layup. But one of the athletic plays in the game is obviously the spin move, and uh, a lot of players like to use it, but now it's obviously become legal in our game now. Yeah, and the, the key to this, Tim, is again, um, when the player gains control of the ball. But uh, you may notice that we don't use the term in the rule book there won't be any reference to zero because uh, it's all about movements. So they still wish to emphasise the fact that it's a one-two movement to the basket. So the first gathering when they gain control of the ball with a foot on the floor, that's a zero. Then it's one-two to the basket, which is then 
under the same principles of any, any travel rules. Okay, Bill, so just look at the next example coming up here. Perhaps just walk us through this one. Okay, so if we determine that she gains control of the ball with her right foot on the floor, she puts her left foot back down, which is the first step. She puts her right foot down again, which is the second step, and that's a two-step movement towards the basket. As we watch these clips, Bill, I can see the key focus for referees is going to be able to identify the zero, the zero step, I guess. But what advice can you give to referees on determining which foot is the zero step? It's the same principles that we use um, for travel all over the court. And that is, we don't want to split hairs. We don't want people having to look at a game off a video and seeing that somebody has travelled. If you have to look at the video and slow it down, then we will give the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. Bill, the next clip is a really interesting one. We'll play it a couple of times, but just really shows how much an advantage the offensive player can get um, if we're unable to identify where the zero step is. Okay, here her left foot was the zero. She steps on her right foot, which is one. She lands on two, which is two. And then she takes an additional step which then makes it three, which would be illegal. So it's left, right, jump two. Now she's dead, she can't move. She has now taken an additional step, that's a travel. The next example is interesting as well, Bill, because the player, the offensive player, actually travels as they move into the jump stop. So it's one thing the referee's got to be mindful of as well. Yeah, you see here that she's her left foot for the first time is zero. She then goes for, to her right foot, which is one. She goes then back to her left foot, which is two, and then comes to a jump stop, which ends up being three. And then to make it even more, she then takes another step, which would be four. Bill, the next part of the game we want to look at is obviously the jump stop. And jump stop's obviously a significant part of our game as well. Uh, but I guess uh, just take the opportunity to talk through a couple of jump stop sort of situations here. Tim, what this shows you is remembering the new rules apply to a player who is moving. So when they finish their dribble and they are moving and they come to a jump stop, it now then means that they are not moving and as a consequence the old travel rules still apply. So you move, jump to land on two, you are then allowed to lift one foot, that foot then determines the other one being the pivot foot, you then must release the ball or pass or shoot the ball before that pivot foot returns to the floor. If we just have a look at this example here, if you could just take the time to walk us through the jump stop. Here, with her, gathers the ball with her right foot, that's zero. One is her left foot. Two, she comes to a jump stop with both feet to the ground and then releases the ball by jumping in the air and releases the ball before she comes back down to the floor. And obviously, Bill, there's different types of variation to the jump stop. Yeah, so what can happen, Tim, is you could take one step which would be the zero, come to a jump stop with two feet, or you could be receiving the ball while in the air and coming to a two foot landing, which would be a jump stop as well. Once you've come to that jump stop though, the principles, the old principles of the old rule apply where you're only allowed that one additional step from there. Remember, if you gain control of the ball with one foot on the floor, that's zero, you make one more step, which would be one. If you now jump stop, that's two, you are dead. You cannot make an additional step or that would be illegal. The next example, Bill, is a player receiving the ball on the move followed by a 0-1-2 layup. I mean, there's obviously clearly a lot to referee on this play. The referee really needs to identify if the player received the ball on the move or if they were stationary. This is an example of two situations, Tim. Receiving the ball while on the move, uh, one foot is on the floor, that's zero. You take another step, which makes one. Now she must release the ball before she takes her second step to start her dribble. Now she ceases her dribble, gaining control of the ball. That's left foot zero, right foot one, left foot two. As we can see, these are massive changes that are occurring to, to our game with regards to the foot movement of players. Um, the most important thing to remember is this is regarding players who are on the move. This example is receiving the ball while on the move. She has one foot on the floor, which is a zero step. She now then takes the one step. But because she now is starting her dribble, she's starting from a stationary position, she must release the ball before she lifts her pivot foot. 
And obviously, Bill, I mean, touched on uh, spectators, but participants are going to take some time to obviously learn it, but spectators as well. I mean, is there any way that we can fast track the education of spectators about understand the travel rule? No, it's very difficult to, I guess, um, uh, to educate particularly spectators. Um, the most important thing is I think the best process is to regard when they gather the ball off the dribble or on the, uh, from a pass that the st foot that's on the floor is regarded as the zero. And then if we still maintain the one-two movement towards the basket, then that uh, is exactly the, the way to approach it. Just in closing, Bill, there are obviously a couple of things that haven't changed. So perhaps if you could walk us through those. Well, the, the key really, uh, Tim, is to for referees still to identify the pivot foot and once having established which is the pivot foot. If that pivot foot re-establishes again, um, that's illegal. So... In our examples here, we have the player jumping on the same foot. Um, that means that pivot foot was then jumped and re-established again. That's illegal. Another example here, that was a little skip of the, uh, of the pivot foot, that fit foot here. She skips and puts it back down again. That's landing on the same foot. That is still a travel. The next example shows the, the player taking control of the ball, jumping off two feet and landing on two feet again. Like a bunny hop, that is still illegal. Thanks for that, Bill. I mean, obviously we'd like to highlight as well that when we went about putting these clips together with both uh, Tig yeah. and also uh, Molly, um, these aren't one takes. Um, both players need to practice the moves, so it is going to take time. It is a transition period, not only for players, but also for referees as well. On behalf of Barca Victoria, we'd like to thank you for watching the video today um, and look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you.